Hi everybody, Jeff Frick here with theCUBE. We're having a CUBE conversation in the Palo Alto studio. It's something that we do when we got a little break in the show schedule and we can take a minute, catch our breaths, and still sit down with the tech leaders that you want to hear from. But now we can do it in the studio outside the context of the hustle and bustle of a show. And we're really excited to have a true industry veteran. He's been around for probably longer than he wants me to say on air, so I'll let him uh, say how long. But Hu Yoshida, the CTO of Hitachi Data Systems, welcome. Thank you, Jeff. Great to see you. Pleasure to be here. Well, doing a little research for this uh, interview, you've been around for a while, you've done a number of interviews, and the thing mm. that struck me was kind of the, the, maybe the last big trend that you were so excited about, server virtualization, and what a phenomenal difference that made in the marketplace mm -hmm. as well as your business. Are we going through another one of those now? Yes, well, we're, you know, we're going through this digital transformation, and uh, I guess IDC is the one that started that term and it's based upon uh, you know, the social, mobile, analytics, and cloud, or SMAC as they call it. Uh, and that has uh, brought some new technologies and be able to create some new innovations in terms of how businesses can transform themselves. Right, but Hitachi Data Systems, you guys are, you guys are way down in the, in the bowels of these big systems. You guys are powering a lot of the, the storage and, and you came from the mainframe business. So how is it affecting your business? How are you seeing you know, real concrete changes in what your customers are asking you for and how you see their business changing. Yes, well, we, we started as, well, we started as mainframes and then we transitioned to storage when the mainframe business sort of declined. But uh, we're more than storage. You know, we have, uh, now we have an x86 uh, server platform, a blade server, uh, that uh, enables us to provide a converged solution along with our, our networking partners like Brocade. And these converged solutions are kind of the basis for private clouds because it eliminates all the, the need for infrastructure connectivity and things like that. So you can roll in one of these things, plug in a, the power, plug in the network, and, and actually pick an application from a table menu of tables, uh, templates, and uh, be off and running. So it makes it very easy to move into this new phase of uh, digital transformation. Yeah, because it's funny, because on the infrastructure side, um, you know, it's kind of production line 101. As soon as you take care of one piece in the production line, then you move to your next point of failure, right. you move to your next point of failure. And, you know, between compute and, and, and storage and networking, everyone seems to say that kind of networking was kind of the slowest leg of the three and kind of coming up to the modern uh -huh. architecture. But now with this type of announcement, they're really bringing their game up quite a bit. Right, yeah. Now, the Gen 6 is really going to open up a, a lot of bandwidth and IOPS for us, and uh, it'll move a lot of the, uh, uh, actually, you know, it's the peaks that we worry about, right? We have to over-configure for the peaks, right. but they've got this, you know, 32 gigabits per second. Yeah, it's uh, the, old plus, Ma, the old Ma Bell problem, right? Everybody calls, everybody calls mom on Mother's Day, and AT&T <laughs> used to have to build the right. whole network out for Mother's Day, but Mother's Day only comes once a year. Yeah. Yeah. The other huge trend that you've talked about extensively, which is another driver behind this, is really software-defined. Mm -hmm. um, and how software defined is, is spreading throughout many parts of the infrastructure and, and adding a whole new layer of flexibility, expandability, elasticity to what customers can do with their infrastructure. Right, yeah, software defined is, is key to this uh, transformation, transformation that we're talking about. And to us, software defined, you know, many times people consider software defined as a way of commoditizing the hardware. And to us, it's much different than that. It's really the communication between hardware and the application layer. A uh, good example is Vival from VMware, where we can publish our unique capabilities up through the VASA interface API, and vSphere can see our capabilities and define a virtual volume around our capabilities. And on our part, we can see into VMware and know that we're talking or configuring for a virtual machine not just presenting up LUNs and uh, you know blocks, but we can actually s recognize that this virtual machine has higher priority than others, and we can allocate to the right resources. Right. So it's a communication process and a synergy between applications and hardware infrastructure. And then what this has enabled, which you've talked about an, uh, numerous times too, is the ability for an individual to manage a whole lot more in terms of infrastructure storage, et cetera. So now as the, as the you know, kind of amount of stuff that I'm responsible for uh, goes up, you know, the management and the management tools 
and the ability to manage this this bigger, more complex things becomes much more significant. Oh yeah, much simpler. You know, the old view of uh, infrastructure or the data center, it was sort of like a triangle, you know, with the, with the base of it being the infrastructure costs and the uh, operations and all that. The top of it was, was the smaller part was what we focused on the applications and analytics. What we have to do now is turn that triangle upside down. So we focus less on the infrastructure Software Defined helps us do that, cloud helps us to do that, and automate that, so that we can spend most of our effort on the application, the end user, and analytics. Right, and we hear that time and time again, mm -hmm. especially with, with the DevOps ethos and what Amazon yes. has done with you know, Swipe Your Card infrastructure, that it's really the application that drives everything, and, and there's, a, there's an expectation in the developer world that now with containers that the application or the infrastructure should just respond to right. what I need from the application as opposed to limiting my application development based on what I think or I got away from the spin up a new server or whatever. That's completely flip flopped as you said. Yeah, I mean you make a good point. I mean it's very disruptive. I mean not just on the infrastructure side but also on the development side as you, as you talked about. So DevOps and Agile and Scrum and those things are very important. So instead of the waterfall approach we took to development, right. uh, that's too slow. We've got to go, you know, be faster. And using these technologies are one thing, but how we use that technology and innovation we put into that is what really makes a difference. Right. And you've been in the game, like we said, you've been in, in, in the game for a while, and, and you've mentioned in a number of your interviews, you know, that, that th these little guys have driven kind of this last big wave of innovation but there's a new one coming on, we hear about it all the time, it's, it's IoT, Internet of Things. Mm -hmm. Now as sensors get cheap, and actually a benefit of these is now all the sensors that are in them yeah. are less expensive and much more pervasive, so now we can put them on dogs, you can put them on shipping, <laughs> uh, shipping boxes from Amazon, you can put them on all kinds of yeah. things. Yeah. So from your point of view, as you start to see IoT build and the momentum build, you know, it's a lot of hype probably right now, but it's coming, right? And big companies like GE are behind it and mm -hmm. you know a lot of players are behind it. What does that make you think? How excited are you about IoT? Are there some specific challenges you're looking forward to taking down or do you see it as just kind of the next big step function of kind of demand for the big three of compute, networking and storage? Yeah, it's it's another integration process between the information technology we have we grew up with the data centers and the operational technology that comes from those sensors. How do we bring those things together? You know, um, we have, you know, we have to be able to bridge that. One of the ways we can do that is with several things we have to bridge. We have to bridge the infrastructure, okay, and then that's software defined. We have to bridge the data, and so we have to move more toward object stores with more enriched uh, metadata, and we've got to bridge the information. So the the data that comes from IoT is different from your structured data center, but you need to bring together that Oracle or SAP data together with this sensor data that comes in and integrate that together. So we acquired a company last year called Pentaho that does that, it allows me to integrate all these things. And the way it, we have all these connectors to all these disparate types of databases is that it's open source. So open source contributes a lot of this, we just harden it and provide a, a subscription maintenance for that. So open source is another key driver for, right. for enabler for this uh, transformation that we're yeah, talking about. Because you even talked about the transformation at, at Hitachi going from proprietary ASICs, um, yes. proprietary software to more open source and Intel chips and again, kind of leveraging best of breed at scale and bringing that type of capability into your core. Right, you know, the other thing is the, the Intel roadmap, I mean, that is amazing with how they went to the, all these cores and everything. And so that has enabled us to do away with a lot of the ASICs we used to have to make. Um, we do have some ASICs and FPGAs for special purpose, but primarily it's standard Intel um, memory and cores. And th what that enables us to do is to have a software hypervisor for storage. In other words, all our mid-range, you remember how we used to have separate mid-range and enterprise storage? Right, right. Now that's all running all with one hypervisor, storage yeah. hypervisor. It's interesting, we, uh, I think it was at HP maybe, we were talked about you know this IoT, the concept of kind of IT versus OT. Mm -hmm. um, and congratulations on the Pentaho acquisition. We were at Pentaho World, it's a great, a great event, great show, a lot of traction, mm -hmm. but you know, the OT, the operational technology that runs shop floors that people at GE are working, that's been cranking along all the time. Then you have the IT is kind of two separate worlds and this, and this IoT really is bringing those two worlds 
together and the right. connectivity together of the devices and the sensors and the, sh and the shop floor versus the IT systems. Yeah, and what's fortunate for us as Hitachi Data Systems is our parent company has been in the uh, IoT, well, the uh, operational world. Uh, they build uh, nuclear reactors, uh, trains, locomotives, and all the uh, infrastructure types of things. Right. And so we're able to uh, bring that expertise together with our expertise in the information systems and create this um, IoT so solution. in a great spot. Uh -huh. Right, we're in a great spot. <laughs> <laughs> so a little more specific about the announcement today. Um, uh, you're partnering with, with Brocade on this Gen 6. Mm -hmm. What does it mean to you uh, for Hitachi Data Systems? What does it mean for your customers? Oh, well, um, it enables us, you know, we're going to all flash. I mean, I think we've already passed the tipping point for all flash. Um, you know, with uh, our 6.4 terabyte flash drives, we're actually cheaper than uh, lower cost, total cost of ownership than uh, hard drives. Um, and uh, so the cost is not a factor anymore. And then all the surveys, Gartner just did a survey, said that, you know, the users of Flash reported, you know, savings not only in power, cooling, maintenance, and performance, uh, the normal things, but also things like uh, licensing costs, because they don't have to license as many cores or uh, instances of databases because of performance of Flash. So what this Gen 6 does, it just opens up the, the highway or the lanes, as, as Jack was talking about, for us to be able to drive more workload through there. Right. And, uh, and possibly even reduce the footprint even further by making better utilization of what we have and not have as many cores and instances of applications. And as you were talking about a little before we went online, it's beyond just flash or the all flash array, but really now looking down the road at potentially the all flash data center and the impacts that yeah. that is going to have as these data centers keep getting bigger and bigger, the demands, the loads are going up and up, yeah. power continues to be an issue, but this is a complete game changer in terms of an all flash right. data center. You know, all flash arrays were the hot thing, right? The, right. the, the, the investors are just, VCs are going crazy about those things, investing a lot of money into them. But you know, those all flash arrays are really appliances. Uh, if you want an all flash data center, you still have to worry about all the enterprise things around availability, you know, uh, replication, uh, disaster recovery, security features, shredding, encryption, and all that. Those things come with an enterprise array. So um, if you're talking about an all, uh, enterprise, all flash data center, it's more than just an all flash array. You've got to expand that requirements to include all the enterprise requirements we've traditionally had. Right. So, uh, and that's, that's why Gen Brocade is so, uh, uh, the Gen 6 is so important to this. Right, right. Because not only does it give us the performance, but it also has some additional uh, availability features, like they have um, a forward error correction uh, for in-stream types of error corrections. Uh, it has uh, FCSP. Um, they do CHAP, you know, like a challenge handshake authentication protocol that we have with, with Ethernet. They do that with Fiber Channel. And so we we had those additional capabilities in, in the uh, uh, fiber channel switches now, right. Gen 6. Really, really just in, in, in sync with software-defined everything, right? Mm -hmm. So it's not just right. speeds, now you have management, you have software capabilities, you have all kinds right. of things that you can now add in. And as you said, what's the point of hooking up a really fast drive to an old, an yeah. old legacy uh, connection system that really wasn't built for the, the performance that you yeah. can get out of that? And the I.O. insight, the, which is key to seeing, seeing that whole network and right. seeing what's there. So before I let you go, running out of time, um, just kind of get your perspective as to where we are today in, in, in kind of the IT um, industry with these massive shifts in terms of you know cloud and, mm -hmm. and, and big data now being an asset and not a liability and flash, even the all flash data center and, and mobile and, and around the corner IoT. As you kind of sit back you know, on a Friday night maybe with a glass of wine and think, wow, this is just, Crazy for all the innovation you've lived through and seen. How do you rank where we are today, and, and what do you think about when you look out over the dash? Yeah, I don't know. You know, I've been in this business a long time, but every year it just seems to be getting uh, you know more and more. The world is just expanding. You know, we we see it. You know, so much data being created, and we know we can't store all that data. So part of the things that we'll have to struggle with is how what do we save and what we don't save and what can we recreate just from metadata 
So uh, metadata object store has become more important. Um, but you know, today we're in this transition. We we have to have sort of take a bimodal approach. We still have our core systems that we need to take care of and nurture and grow and scale, but we also need to then move into the the new the new innovations, the things that are that are not as atomic in consistency as we have in our data center, but eventual consistency, things like that. Um, so we, we have both worlds, but we need to be able to bridge the information, the data, and the infrastructure between the two. And, and networking is a key piece of that bridging. No shortage of opportunity going forward? No. <laughs> All right. All right, Hugh. Well, thanks for taking a few uh -huh. minutes out of your day. Appreciate it. Thank you. All right, Hugh Yoshida, I'm Jeff Frick. You're watching CUBE Conversations, SiliconANGLES TV, the CUBE production. Thanks for watching.